We're doing warehouse style loads and regularly drop and rec oh, recreate. <laughs> We're doing warehouse style loads and we regularly drop recreate constraints, but it all causes all sorts of locking issues. And the operations are generally very slow. Are there workarounds? And the answer is yes. The key thing here is understanding the importance of constraint state transitions and their impact on locking and performance. And probably best explaining all that, that um, gobbledygook with a nice simple demo. So I'm gonna create, a, I'm gonna have two tables here. One's called parent or PAR, one's called child. Parent is a copy of DBA objects, about 80,000 rows. I'll add a primary key. Child, I pre-created because it's got uh, 24 million rows and 500,000 blocks. It took a long time to create, so it's already there. It has a column called P, which I want to add a foreign key back to the parent table. So here are some of the challenges when it comes to adding constraints. I go add this constraint on, and while I'm doing that, someone else wanting to do any work with this child table is stuck. You can see the first session is busily going through those all those millions of rows trying to work out whether each one's valid. While I'm adding the constraint, I have literally blocked access to the entire table. That's not ideal. So that's a problem in its own right. Once that finally constraint finally got added, then the DML in another session was allowed. But already we've got a locking problem here because if adding a constraint takes 10 minutes, I've effectively blocked access to the table for 10 minutes. Even worse is while we have effectively open transactions on this table, Things like more DML, like I want to do tomorrow's load or the next load, I want to drop the constraints to do another load, is blocked as well. So how do we work around this problem first? Let's work on how to drop a constraint first in a nice, easy way. All we have to do is, and this is a piece of syntax that not people are many aware of, is you can now do drop constraint online. Now, drop constraint online doesn't stop other people from doing work, right? They can still do work. What will happen is it'll wait until the table is not in an active transaction state. So if I roll back these or commit them, doesn't matter, then I'm allowed to drop it. But the cool thing there is now it's the drop constraint command that waits and it hasn't blocked any other DML from occurring on the table. It's just gonna wait until all DML is finished and then you'll be able to drop the constraint. So that's cool thing number one. This is the secret to getting constraints on in a very efficient manner. Rather than doing add a constraint, which by default will create the constraint and then validate all the data, do it in multiple phases. So in this case, I'm going to add the constraint, enable, no validate, and that's instantaneous. So it says the constraint is now on for any new or modified data. The existing data hasn't been checked, but all new data is now going to be obeyed and make sure it's checked that it exists in the parent table if it's coming into the child. Now let's go into session two and prepare a delete. And this is why it's cool. Now that the constraint is on, I can now go ahead and do the second part, which is let's make sure the old data is also valid. So I can do validate it. The cool thing is unlike before, the child table is not locked. I can still do DML while the validation process is going on. All DML that occurs now or in future is captured by the enable no validate. It's only the old data that is being checked with this kind of stuff. Now, even though I've got an active transaction here on the right-hand side, notice that the enable validate can complete successfully. It didn't get caught up behind an active transaction. Okay, I'll commit these and they're gone. But effectively, I can do this two-step process. This is instantaneous, and this can run and doesn't block DML on the child table. So that resolves the locking issue. Effectively, now I can have activity going on the child while I validate the constraint. Now, I dropped the constraint again, so I'm going to go ahead and I want to add the constraint. So in this case, I'm going to get an active transaction here. Let's do enable, no validate. So what happens now is what if I have an active transaction going when I try to first create this constraint with enable, no validate? Yes, this one will wait. But once again, my child table is not locked, right? The no validate is waiting for information here to be finished and then it works. So once again, I haven't locked the child table. It's this person here that simply waits for DML to finish and then go ahead and, and does his work. Locking problems, hopefully, are a thing of the past as long as you do this constraint transition from enable, no validate to enable, validate. The next thing is, what if I want to do that validation process much, much faster? So what I'll do is I'll make these tables parallel. 
because hopefully I can add a constraint in parallel to use all the power of my server. So I've made the child table parallel, made the parent table parallel, I've got the constraint. Let's get this one ready in session two. This is a thing that's going to show me what sessions are currently active besides my own. So currently there's nothing active. Let's do this. The normal old style where I simply just try to add a constraint. If I run it, there's one active session. Even though these two tables are parallelized, if you just do alter table add constraint, like the old style, which does add the constraint and validates in one phase, wait, you don't get any parallelism. And I'm back to 20 seconds again. This is another benefit of drop the constraint of doing enable no validate first, and then doing the validate as a second phase. Look at the difference. Enable validate. I use the parallel engine now because the two tables are defined as parallel. And enable validate on a constraint that already exists in no validate mode can use parallelism. And therefore, rather than 21 seconds, it was three times faster. Almost all the time, whenever you're doing any constraint work, look at doing it in two phases, even if you're in small scale data here. Enable no validate, then enable validate. It involves locking issues and you open up the opportunities of parallelism for performance. If you're dropping a constraint, be aware of the online keyword. I think I said in an office hour session a while ago, whenever you're trying anything online, just add online to the end of it and see what happens. Drop constraints is one of those examples. That way you can drop constraints without getting a resource busy error. It'll just wait for DML to finish. And what's more, it doesn't block any ongoing DML as well.